Today we're going to be talking about the geological resources of Somalia and this is in partnership with Association of Somali Engineers. We are a UK-based organisation that is a platform for both students and professionals to collaborate, share ideas and to network and we aim to bolster levels of engineering awareness and employability within the community and to promote and develop engineering services and best practice for sustainable development. And today our speaker, Dr. Osman Salat Hirsi, um, for those of you that don't know, uh, he initially got his first geology degree from the Somali National University. After that, he had a scholarship to study at Florence University in Italy, where he gained his PhD. After a while, he went to Carlton University in Canada, where he got an, a second degree in side, se sedimentology and sedimentary basin analysis. Now he works at the University of Regina and he has over 200 papers in peer reviewed journals, book chapters, conference abstracts, open file reports, consultancy reports and, and institutional publications. Dr. Hirsi in his current role alongside his university is a consultant uh, for the petroleum industry in which he has worked with the Putland State of Somalia and the Federal Government of Somalia, in which he is still adamant to continue. Today's lecture will be held in, in English. However, we do hope that our future events we're able to uh, speak in Somali. So thank you, Dr. Osman, you can start. Starting with the water. We know that our country, the droughts became kind of a chronic, they come uh, every few years, a very de devastating one uh, comes there. And Abaru was on Ronayan, Sanokisanam Barbe Son on Ronayan, or the Ayuk Babinaya. That kind of a devastation uh, for the people, livestock, agriculture, uh, and all living things, and kind of uh, it, 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 it kills many people indeed yeah, in general. Piala Antas, Yabartas. Yeah, we So is it because of lack of water or lack of proper exploration, exploitation and management? And you judge it after I give you some kind of uh, common sense information about the uh, the water resource of Somalia, uh, then you judge it. And information is that the information So this uh, figure shows more or less the, the distribution of the rain in a very simplified way. Somalia, the rainfall is generally kind of estimated to, to have from 100 millimeter per year to about 600 millimeter per year. And in a general sense, the rainfall increases from northwest, down northeast, sorry, northeast to, to the south. So it's gradual increase of the rainfall. So in the Bari region, it's more or less 100. That's the least rain, rain uh, zone. And, and increases to the west as well, towards uh, Burma, Gebele, uh, that region, that's where it, it increases further to, to the west. So that's the general uh, distribution. We have two uh, seasons of rain, uh, April, June, that is the good season, the spring, and their season, which is September, October. Yeah, we may miss um, sometimes and we may get sometimes. And then also the intensity, how much we get is, but overall, we, this varies from 100 to to 600 millimeters per year. And the distribution is that from Northeast to South and also to the, to the West. But most of the rain that occurs in Somalia ends up into either to the sea or it infiltrates in subsurface. So only the small amount of, 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 of the water, uh, rain water is, is used. So here's the, more as topographic, topography and water flow. If you see here the topography of, of Somalia, we have two major rivers that are more or less uh, perennial. They, they, they exist almost all, all the year. Maybe Shabelle region, they become 
a bit dry every other time, but Juba is more, it's, it's permanent, it's, it's constant. And here in Juba, it, it goes into, into, the, into the ocean, into the Indian Ocean. The Shabelle one, it ends up in sub, uh, subsurface, in the, in the sand dunes of uh, Shalambod and that area, it, it infiltrates there. But then the infiltrated water also move into, into the sea, in the subsurface. So generally when water infiltrates, they go into towards the sea and the ocean. So groundwater flow into the oceans. So whether it is underground water or if it is the, the, the rivers and, 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 and kind of streams that are flowing all the way to the, uh, to the ocean. So we lose in both, in both uh, ways. So besides the Shabella River, the other major ones is the Nugal uh, stream or Nugal Valley. Yeah, taking water from uh, Togder all the way down and then it goes into Ail. So it, it, it contributes when it's rainy, it takes all that water into, into the Ail uh, and into the Indian Ocean. So we lost it. Another one is the Doror Valley and it takes all the way, if it reaches there, into the ocean as well. So it seems that we are losing all that water. In the northern part, uh, just north of the mountains, it also ends up into, and into the Gulf Aden. So all these kind of streams, when it rains, they take water into it. And even in subsurface, they take into, into, the, into the sea. So we, we are losing quite a big time the amount of water that is uh, available from the, from the rains. Here, of course, people have every uh, reason to be happy when it rains, uh, because rain is life. It's, it's, it's the life. Um, but it has also devastating consequences. Yeah. So besides giving relief to the people and all living things, the rain is also destructive in many aspects, in many occasions. Here falls in the cyclone in 2013, yeah, it destroyed quite quite a lot. Yeah, so here the, these are the examples uh, of of the devastation that it has uh, generated. Negative impacts include soil erosion. Yeah, it, when this water is running, it kind of uh, take the soil uh, that can be uh, cultivated uh, grains and everything. So that kind of uh, destruction is there, and also uh, uh, death and drowning of animals and and uh, and, and people in the valleys, uh, destruction of houses, roads, buildings, yeah, you, you name it. There are so much uh, uh, devastation that it generates uh, when these kind of torrential uh, rains uh, come uh, into, into effect. Here again, example of uh, the Nugal flash flood in 2013 from that uh, uh, cyclone. Yeah, you see here, for instance, this is the mainland of Nugal, the flat land of Nugal. And you see, it looks like an open sea, yeah. See, very kind of a wide area that has covered it. And it's got the, the road uh, that is uh, uh, connecting, I think, between Karo and Khartou. Yeah, yeah, somewhere there, yeah. It, it cut that one. And here again, that water flows into the Nugal Valley and contributes to the, uh, takes it to the, to, to the ocean, uh, to the Indian Ocean. So huge amount of water is, is lost. Again, here in uh, Johar and, and Hiran, Bedouin 2020, Johar 2015, uh, destruction is there. Bedouin again, Kardo uh, is here as well. So we have that much destruction uh, for the, uh, in every aspect and every other time, you see. So we get the destruction, but do we get the, uh, the benefits of it? Very little, I would say. So traditional ways of harvesting rainwater, yeah, normally we use what's called a uh, bucket. Uh, people construct uh, these kind of uh, maybe 200 uh, barrels of water it can contain or 300. And, and we'll use also the bully, the pools, and also the hand dug wells as well. So these are the main, the, the traditional ways of harvesting the, the rainwater. But soon this become dry. Barkat Belli and El can become dry within a very short time. And now it's time to migrate to look for water. Yeah, everything becomes dry. So very sad. That's when again the, the destruction and devastation comes. Uh, the rain infiltration recharge the groundwater. Usually when it rains, uh, the water table becomes shallower. It moves up. So it was the first start what water table was here. 
and then it rains, rain infiltrates, and then the water becomes shallow. And therefore, yeah, the shallow wells and the uh, and wells can, can, can give water. But if it doesn't rain, therefore there's no infiltration, and therefore we need to, to drill maybe deeper wells and so on and so forth. So that is uh, one, one effect. Here, when it rains, here for instance, the Almado Mountains, Baran is somewhere here. And when it rains, the rain infiltrates in these highlands and it goes way down and runs down. And here, Baran, well, it's kind of a, the, 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 the spring is running. Yeah, because the, it's raining and the water has been uh, taken up. So that's well. So actually in the past, uh, it is used to that there was a phrase that the locals used, so there was no worry about water in the Baran area. But nowadays we hear that there's a shortage of water in, in Baran. Yeah, it is possible that if it rains less, yeah, the aquifer will, uh, the water table will go down, but that requires simply to drill relatively deeper wells. Yeah. So it, it rains in the highlands. This is the highlands of, uh, uh, of Almadou. And then it rains, infiltrates, and then it comes out of the, of the lowland, where, where the mountains, uh, at the foothills of the mountains, they, where Baran is located. Not only that, if you look even the Almskar area, we do have uh, the same here. Here, um, uh, Bulahar, it's in the northern part of the Gulf Range. You see kind of a digging, even with the hand, if we have the water there, it's Washako or, or Acho, whatever it's called. Yeah, so people are getting, so when it rains, the water is coming and it, the aquifer, aquifer becomes very shallow. And here in Cheriban, this is El Ghost, you see, this is a hand well and people can easily get water and very fresh, very nice water is, is there. Yeah, very fresh water. Here is Kshuban, see the, the spring is coming and water is there, very shallow. This is Ophain, the spring of Ophain is running. So, so when it rains, the aquifer comes high and therefore the springs will follow. When there's no rain or the, uh, it has been consumed, the water table goes down and therefore the springs become dry. So there's this kind of a relationship between the, uh, the, the rainy season and the springs. But what we need during the time of the rain season, we need simply to drill a bit deeper wells and therefore the water will be, will be there. Of course, it requires uh, more of a hydrogeologic studies, uh, the water flow, the aquifers, where they're located, how deep they are, how thick they are, what's the porosity, permeability, lots of other kind of information is, is required. And that information is highly important to be recorded during uh, drilling wells, because that will be useful for later wells to be drilled and, 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 and to, to feed the people. So can the situation be improved? Definitely, yes, we can improve the situation. One thing very important is that digging dams, uh, uh, building dams and digging wells. Yeah, dams in, in Los Amelio, El uh, Here, how we are building water dams that capture the water during the rain season. Currently, most of the rainfall goes into the, into the oceans. And, uh, at the but I be for Madan like you want to Bahana in an uh and some in a dams be he'll walk to and actually uh, importance can dams by lay in uh can be summarized into three points. Number one, how we have reduction of the soil erosion in a year and never gurk never gurk here and make be he'll up to uh the running water key or read the oil was here half is here at the wire on it. Number one, number two, how we have. Uh, short-term uh, water policy. Here, the water policy is the water policy is not 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 the water the water policy is not the water Richard Sumanian aquifer key, the Ruki Begalian. Marka Paki Ruki Galan, they kind of a recharge aquifer, and then therefore the water table comes up, and therefore the LSE will be uh, producing water. So, three kind of important uh, uh, uses reduction of soil, 
catchment of the water and also the recharge of the aquifers. Very important. Actually, construction of dams has started, and very good example is the one done near Hargeisa, Humbawe in a dam near uh, near Hargeisa. So that has been uh, built in 2017, quite very useful. And also in Bandar Bale area, we have here the the Biogudud Dam. So this has been built as well. Yeah, and there are quite many. This is simply examples of, of this, but quite a good number, I would say. I don't know exactly the number, but uh, maybe 20s or 30s per uh, built in, in, in these two areas, two regions also. And still, it seems at least these two administrations are aware of, of this, and hopefully they will continue uh, doing more. So in summary, there's no shortage of water in Somalia, but it requires better exploration and storage system and also responsible and sustainable exploitation and management. management. I'm sure region for instance example maybe rank about 400 to 500 millimeters way in badan malahash jubar river by galan or bad kushban lakin infiltration badan now or da but waxa hoos eegaaga biya badan ba hoos eegaaga waxa loo baahan yahay dadka in ay loo qodo and the same other regions are the same as well so biya laan ma jirto lakin waxa jira exploration laan in aan mataqaana ay loo qodin ama aan waro loo samayn ama aan dams loo qodin that is the the major thing waa laga raysan kara hadii Houses, I mamula the mesh free dollar the that mesh mamul get chogai I I I use the again. Hadi hita ta sa is andi akarin wahan kutarin la hita in that ka local ka he matra na kabul budikani. Ine yego use the again I I contribution kusama yansi da dam ya yusama yansi lai. 